Human rights lawyer Beatrice Mtetwa has uh, been barred by Magistrate Ngoninduna from representing detained journalist Hopewell Chinono. The magistrate has also directed that the Law Society of Zimbabwe cancel her license for what he termed scandalizing the court. For more on this and the latest on the ground in the country, we're now joined uh, by Harare-based human rights lawyer and activist Doug Coltart, who himself uh, is uh, facing a trial tomorrow. And we'll find out more about that just now. Um, Doug, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. It's, it's quite a thing to watch from a distance what's happening inside Zimbabwe. Take us through wh how we got to a point where a magistrate is deciding whether a lawyer can represent her client or not. Yeah, it, it really is a very uh, concerning uh, development. Uh, so this was a, an application made by, uh, by the State Council uh, uh, last week um, uh, seeking to have uh, Beatrice and Tetra barred uh, as Hopewell's lawyer. The basis of the application uh, is all based around uh, a, a Facebook uh, uh, account, which it seems is not even disputed by the state, is, doesn't belong to Beatrice and Tetra. It, uh, it's, uh, it's a Facebook account that is, um, is, is related to a documentary which was made about her some years ago called Beatrice and Tetra and the Rule of Law. It's run by the filmmakers uh, who are based in Boston. Um, uh, but uh, the state's argument is that she is responsible for whatever content uh, is on that, even though it isn't her account. Um, they view uh, something which was said by, uh, by that account uh, as scandalizing the court, and uh, mag the magistrate uh, Ngoni Nduna uh, agreed with the state and has now removed uh, uh, or, uh, or disqualified uh, Beatrice and Tetra from representing uh, Hopewell. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about uh, law because, you know, I'm just wondering, are there sections of law, what's the source of law that uh, points to anything on social media being illegal and that a reasonable person will know that if I write on social media or somebody writes on my behalf on social media that I'm going to break the law and that these are the consequences? Yeah, so uh, there, there, there are um, sections of the, of the law which uh, are, have been used to police uh, social media. Um, of course, the, the tr this, this is the, the trial that uh, Beatrice and Tetra and myself are involved in is one of these social media uh, trials where, where Hopewell Chingono uh, has, has been charged with inciting public violence. Uh, uh, simply for you know his uh, his journalistic reporting um, uh, through his uh, his social media page. So these are the these are the the, the types of criminal offences that um, that are, are not really meant to be used in this in this kind of way, but which are abused by uh, by the system in order to try and clamp down on on, on any form of free expression. And now the attack against uh, against lawyers, which has been ongoing for some months um, but uh, but this really seems an escalation in that this removal of Beatrice uh, as Hopewell's counsel as well as the ordering uh, of her to be or, or, or uh, calling on the National Prosecuting Authority to consider bringing criminal charges against her it's, it is a very concerning development one gets a sense that they might be killing two birds with one stone. On the one hand, Beatrice Mtetwa has always been a bit of a thorn in the flesh for uh, mm. authorities. But on the other, uh, it seems as if they want to keep Hopewell Chinono in jail and no matter what. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, it, it does seem that, uh, that this is also uh, part of, uh, of uh, a delaying process of ensuring that, uh, that, that, that Hopewell is, is kept incarcerated for as long as, as possible. Uh, the, the bail hearing is now going ahead with, uh, with the, the, the new lawyer who has been briefed uh, b uh, by ourselves, uh, Advocate Nyamakura. Uh, but that is happening behind closed doors in an in-camera uh, uh, bail hearing, which 
because of that, I can't speak about uh, what 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 mm. goes on uh, behind those closed doors. Is that unusual to have bail hearings in camera uh, such as this? It, it is. Uh, um, it's uh, it's 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 virtually it's virtually unheard of uh, and 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 very very surprising. What does this mean for justice in the country generally? We heard Beatrice Mtetwa today saying that this is a, a curtailment of uh, um, uh, representation for uh, people seeking justice. Certainly, uh, I think that uh, that this. Uh, attack on Beatrice and Tetua and and in general the attack uh, on on lawyers that we have seen escalated uh, over the the past uh, months uh, um, will have a chilling effect on the legal profession uh, lawyers will be more reluctant to to take up human rights cases to represent certain types of clients uh, who are perceived as uh, as as being dissenting voices or or, or Government critics uh, or journalists who are exposing corruption, uh, and uh, and that certainly is a very worrying development uh, for access to justice uh, in in Zimbabwe. All right, I know that you're an officer of the court, and it may be difficult for you to talk about the courts and judgments in particular. But um, one gets a sense that the justice system is complicit in what the authorities want as outcomes? As you say, I, I, I do need to, to couch it carefully. Uh, mm. And as we've seen uh, from, uh, from what has happened uh, to, to Beatrice, uh, any form of, uh, of criticism of the courts, even uh, genuine and, and, and fair criticism of the courts, um, uh, is, uh, is, is, is cracked down on in Zimbabwe. But certainly there have been a number of, uh, of decisions uh, in uh, in the, the, the uh, well in, in, in this case in particular, but for for some time, which uh, which we as as lawyers thoroughly disagree with on uh, on the law, uh, and uh, and certainly seem uh, to to favour um, the state at the expense of justice. What needs to happen to save the profession? Because now you'll probably find lawyers being fearful of representing certain types of clients. Yeah, well, I think that uh, that uh, Zimbabwean lawyers, as well as uh, the Zimbabwean people, uh, do need to um, to 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 find courage uh, to press on. Uh, and uh, and to keep demanding our rights uh, uh, and and keep enforcing our rights, which are enshrined in our uh, constitution. You know, we have an, a, a, a fairly new 2013 constitution, which is uh, very progressive in, in many respects, enshrines uh, many rights, uh, and yet we see those rights being violated on uh, on a day to day basis. Uh, but both in the courts as well as through as through uh, peaceful. Uh, non-violent action um, um, uh, lawyers uh, doctors nurses teachers citizens uh, need to, to to take action uh, to to demand the, the Zimbabwe that we want all right let's talk a little bit about yourself as well because uh, I know that you're facing some legal challenges um, and tell us about this curious case of reading uh, Paolo Freire's classic work, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. What's all this about? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fairly uh, bizarre case, uh, and uh, I guess we will find out more from from the state uh, tomorrow uh, uh, when the trial kicks off. How exactly they uh, they regard this as uh, as in, um, uh, participating in a gathering with intent to promote public violence, which is what myself and a group of teachers uh, have uh, have been charged with, simply for uh, for 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 a gathering, which you know, as you've mentioned, we're discussing the work of uh, of Paulo Freire. This is a a classic educational book. Uh, a, a, a leading thinker who was influential in the decolonial struggles across Africa. Uh, uh, this book, in fact, was 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 at some point soon after independence a central part of 
um, the, uh, the Zimbabwe's educational curriculum. And so how discussing uh, uh, various, uh, you know, pedagogical approaches constitutes uh, promoting public violence is anyone's guess. Uh, but uh, but that's, uh, that's for the state uh, to prove. And uh, I think that um, they'll have a difficult time. All right, Doug, you've been a lawyer a long time, and I just want you to give me a sense of, has it become progressively difficult to be a lawyer in Zimbabwe? And, you know, I see the postings on the uh, uh, Zimbabwe uh, Lawyers for Human Rights uh, um, um, social media pages, and I'm gobsmacked with some of the things that I see there and the things that people are being charged with. It's almost as if... Um, you'll be charged for crossing the road wearing the wrong t-shirt yeah uh, i mean uh, it, it, absolutely you literally could be charged with with something like that uh, one of the one of the cases from the 31st of, of of july arrests someone was arrested for carrying the zimbabwe flag the, the, the national symbol has now been uh, criminalized. It's just utterly absurd. Um, and speaking of the practice of law, yeah, it, it, there are huge challenges. This, this trial that I am facing tomorrow is not the only trial. That, that, I, that I have hanging over my head. Another is one directly related to my work as a lawyer representing a, um, um, a, a trade union uh, organization. Um, I am one of more than 10 lawyers uh, in the past year uh, who have, uh, have been arrested and charged uh, directly in the line of uh, of of uh, of the 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 work as lawyers, I've been assaulted by uh, the the police on on two occasions, as have lawyers such as uh, as Beatrice and Tetra, and others. So, being a lawyer in Zimbabwe is certainly uh, it's a it's a hard hat profession, uh, as is being a journalist, as is being a teacher, as is being a nurse. Uh, 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 any. Uh, Virtually anyone who who tries to stand up for their rights in any kind of way is uh, is met with uh, with fierce uh, repression um, um, in 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 in, uh, in in the most brutal of, of form. And how's Miss Simtetwa at the moment? Uh, I know that she's been fighting uh, for many many years, arrested, <laughs> beaten, harassed. Uh, so I suppose this is just another chapter in, in, a, in a long book of uh, dealing with the system. Yeah, I mean, this is not uh, her first radio. She has been through all of uh, all of this uh, before. Um, you you may have seen her uh, her interview, which she she gave just outside the court, where she said, you know, she's at uh, at the tail end of of her career. She's now in 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 her sixties. She doesn't mind if they if they prosecute her. It's not the first time that they've uh, that they've prosecuted her. So she's incredibly courageous. She takes this uh, she takes this in her. Story. Tried uh, uh, with remarkable grace, but I think uh, her, her, her deepest concern is the chilling effect that uh, that that this will have, uh, uh, particularly on on young lawyers, uh, which is what she spoke about this afternoon, uh, who uh, would love to be able to to practice law and to, to defend human rights, but these kinds of attacks against lawyers certainly make it uh, it, it, it it a difficult prospect. All right. Doug Coltart, thanks very much indeed uh, for talking to us. And uh, we certainly wish you the best of luck uh, as uh, you deal with your own matters uh, from tomorrow. Thanks so much indeed and uh, have a good evening. Thank you very much, Peter.